And welcome back to our coverage on FansChoice.tv tonight. Adam Mackey along with me is Casey LaJoy. Bob Dillner will be joining us in a little bit as the John Blewett III Memorial is on the racetrack. It's such a special event. I got the chance to talk to, to Jimmy Blewett earlier, former winner of this race. Obviously, John Blewett, his, John Blewett III, his brother. And he just talked about how special this night was, that it, how, how awesome it was that the track and how the World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing still, you know, honors his brother. And uh, he said it uh, definitely puts, it's a special place in his heart every time they come here for this race. John Blewett the third, a four-time winner of the Turkey Derby, a one-time winner of the Race of Champions, two-time winner of the North-South Shootout, just plenty of big wins and championships in his career uh, that ended abruptly a number of years ago, been about a decade now, and we still race for him here at New Smyrna Speedway. As you see some of the cars painting the picture of race cars on the track, and these drivers so focused right now for a 76-lap race, Chuck Hosfeld in the 22 always one of the favorites couple of top five runs for him already this week yeah he's sitting third in the points right now 10 points back uh from doug kobe your points are really close amongst your honestly your top four all split by 14 points jimmy blewett sits in second just two points back looking back behind them the 54 a, a car that was so strong last night nearly picked up the victory the pj 54 driven by catalano and Ryan Priest spoiled that party last night, took the lead away. Uh, he really made a show coming up through the field after qualifying on the pole. And then uh, the redraw of eight, marched his way to the front, got there, and I believe he took the lead on lap 13 from Tommy Catalano and never looked back after that. See Calvin Carroll in the silver 25. You see the 46 of Jeffrey Goodale on the outside, right around the middle portion of our 24 car starting field the 17 on the inside lane there bobby meesmer jr the 36 on the outside lane dave sapienza running his second night of the week yes yeah, sapienza running his second night this is the first start for bobby meesmer jr first time that he will be racing the 2019 world series of asphalt stock car racing how about the 64 car right here amy catalano just outside the top five almost passed her son tommy last night late in the going ended up sixth in a strong field we'll keep our eyes on her tonight she was really good sixth in points and something you wouldn't hear often here for the world series and tour modified points is amy catalano is higher than matt hirschman in the points tyler ripkema right there in the 32 car he's not had the success he had a year ago here driver from Owego, new york for straight world series appearance the 11 it's been pretty good at times this week the 11 of dylan stoyer out of new york a 16 year old driver behind the wheel and yeah, we honestly didn't really know much about dylan stoyer coming into uh the 2019 speed weeks but he's really impressed us 16 years old from new york on the outside, it's Chris Ridsdale in the one new NY car from Rochester, New York. On to our next row back. You see Jeremy Gerstner, and on the outside right there, it's the Andy Jankowiak, number 12 X machine. Fresh off a win at the Atlantic Indoors. TQ Midgets. There's Jeremy Gerstner, two-time modified champion down here in the South the last couple years. He really hasn't had the best speed week so far but it's certainly better than was it last year when ricky brooks made him sit out in the grandstands last and watch year, the rest of the yeah, race he sat you know for some bad <laughs> behavior he got put in the grandstands for uh for the rest of a modified feature uh, fans were offering him a, a cold beverage when they walked by it was really something we hadn't seen at a racetrack definitely un unique yeah i remember they got in a little altercation on the back stretch and ricky picked him up on a four wheeler drove him all the way around told him to go sit in the grandstand you can sit there on row number four and watch the rest of this race we talked a lot about our drivers from the middle part of the field back is the front part of the field you see on our screen what a field of tour type modifieds for this 76 lapper tonight Timmy Salamito in the 16 car scheduled to come from the sixth starting position this evening he had some some bad luck last night getting involved in well, that melee out of turn number two they fix that machine up and he'll be ready to go tonight certainly has had the speed but not quite 
what we've seen out of really uh, the top five in points all right on top of each other. Patrick Emmerling, definitely not the World Series he's been looking for a disqualification after a second place run on Monday last night involved in a crash. Yeah, big, a lot of big speed out of this 07 machine. You see a little bit of the damage on the door. They got that car fixed up. Same car from last night. Uh, they didn't pull out a backup or anything. Uh, that car has shown speed, just had a little bit of cosmetic damage. Those are drivers that will be coming from the fifth row in our starting field tonight. Emmerling in the 07, Salamito in the 16. Well, there's a car that's been strong and a driver just as strong. Doug Kobe making his first full attempt at a World Series championship. He won Monday night, finished in the top five last night. He's going to be tough tonight. And this car and driver very strong. You see him gaining his thoughts, going through what he's going to do in this race and a race that's so important to him, Jimmy Blue. Yeah, he said the Bertuccio gang, they weren't. They weren't wanting to win this race for themselves. They weren't wanting to win this race for Jimmy. They were wanting to win it for John Blue. As we send it down to Dylan Smith. Patrick Emmerling in the 07 starts fifth tonight in the John Blue at the third memorial race. He got in a, an accident last night in turn number two with Andy J. Andy J actually ended up on top of the 07 car. They went hard to work all day. We built the whole left front. Patrick told me earlier today that the car is fast off the truck, and it was fast today. So he has no question that he'll be able to make his way back to the front. Emmerling's been fast, and uh, as of last night, he had been top qualifier, something like three tour-type modified events in a row at the World Series dating back to last year. Yeah, he certainly has the speed, and he's got the time to do it, 76 laps. But there's the man I got my money on tonight, Ryan Priest. Dominated last night. Nobody really had anything for him and after the misfortune on night one he really rallied night two and i'm sure tonight will be a night, big night for him as well big week for ryan priest gets to start the oh, daytona yeah. 500 for a full season of nascar cup racing this week and big money matt right there in the 60 car starting from the front row in the pole after winning a championship at the world series last year well, he's going to be one of the favorites. I think that front row, uh, the two that most people have their money on. Yeah, last night we didn't really talk about Hirschman at all very much. Uh, didn't have the greatest starting spot. Was back there with uh, Ryan Priest. Priest bolted to the front. Hirschman did his thing, kind of waited around, and unfortunately was caught up in the mess out of turn number two. He kind of slipped under the radar on us last night. And the cars fire up the sound of these... Big ol' engines in these tour type modifies that will take them 76 laps tonight. All the horsepower that you will see take these rocket ships around the racetrack and fun to watch them drive into the corner and make moves that only these drivers and these cars can make during the World Series. Yeah, last night we saw a lot of exciting racing, a lot of nerf bar to nerf bar contact, but it was still relatively clean. We had the, the incident out of turn number two. You heard Dylan Smith talking about Andy J. Andy J. and Kowiak ended up on top of Patrick Emmerling. I know at one point in the broadcast you said he's got a tire underneath this tire. Well, Andy, Andy J. and Kowiak actually had that problem last night. Literally did. As you see the front of the field, fastest qualifier, Ryan Priest. The invert was just a two, so he starts on the outside lane tonight. The 60 of Matt Hirschman starting on the inside. And Boy blew it in the number two car. How about his first two nights of action this week? Third place Monday, second place on Tuesday. Can he win on Wednesday? We will find out sooner than later as the field has come to life and is rolling under caution, I'm sure, here in just a minute. They're going to let him open up the throttle a little bit, do the controlled pace laps, let him put a little heat in the tires. It is rather chilly tonight more chilly than we've seen uh, in days past but nevertheless still a great night for racing a few drivers uh, running for that championship this week that have a couple of top fives of course kobe a win and a third and hirschman had the second place run opening night fell out last night blew it a third and a second and hosfeld a couple of top five runs with a fifth and a fourth some of the front runners that have been consistent so far in this World Series week. Of course, this car count has picked up over the last couple of years. They're on a rules package and with good tech that they think they're at a 
level playing field. In addition to that, the week's been shortened up. They don't start running on Friday night when the World Series first begins. To cut the expenses a little bit and cut the amount of time that everyone has to be away from work, they run from Monday through Friday of this week, and it's really jumped the count, and that was a great move. Yes, uh, definitely a lot of positive changes have came to these tour type modifieds over the years, and applaud the racetrack and Ricky Brooks, everybody down in tech for really evening the playing field, listening to the to the drivers and what they would want as we have opened up the racetrack, got the pace car off. We're still under caution. This is still technically caution, just letting them really get some heat in the tires, get some heat in the engines before we fire them off green. They'll slow the cars, they'll line them up double wide here in moments just a chance to shake them down our third race of the night two in the books the florida modifieds put on a show tonight exciting feature event that went down to the final laps with wayne parker and augie grill going at it but we see a little bit of late race drama tonight for a big a win in the john blue at the third memorial thanks for watching here on fanchoice.tv and Casey LaJoy, Adam Mackey up here in the booth getting a lot of text messages from people at home. Richie Evans Jr. is shooting at least a couple texts that he's watching along. There you see the fire. More people around that fire. You see the hoods up, winter coats on, especially for the people down south. They're not used to this 50-some degree weather, and it's been in the 50s all day long. It's pretty warm up here in the booth, though. I don't, yeah. I'm okay. We're, we're all right. We don't need any fire. I and mean, I could turn the air down a little bit, but I've been warned. There's a sign. Yeah, we're not allowed to. No touching the thermostat. No touching the thermostat. Don't you touch my thermostat. As Hirschman in the 60, Priest in the 6, our front row, blew it in the 2 on the inside of row number 2. And the other 2 on the outside is Doug Covey. Great run so far this week for those two drivers. They have been among the front runners. And coming into the night, they are the top 2 in points. Doug Covey looking for his first World Series championship and blew it just a few points behind. They've stacked them up double file. The caution lights around this racetrack are turned off. The tour type modifies and the sound of the cars as they go down into turn three. Ready for green. There'll be some strategy playing a part of this. How hard do you go? How much do you save during the course of this race? We're gonna find out underway at New Smyrna for night number six. It's the John Blue at the third memorial as we go to turn one. Ryan Priest with the advantage on the outside. He's going to jump out to the lead, but Hirschman not giving up quite yet. Still batting, battling back on the inside. Look at Doug Kobe now jumps up to the outside, a big money man. Hirschman would like to get up into that outside lane so he doesn't get boxed in and lose that momentum and lose a few spots, but Kobe is going to take it away. Priest goes down, slams the door shut on Hirschman. There's the 16 of Salamito to the outside. Blewett's boxed in. Hosfeld, the professor to the outside. Ryan Priest still showing away a little bit of contact from Kobe. Now Kobe going to go and try to contend for the lead. Kobe going to easily take the six or take the lead away from the six machine. Priest drops into the second spot. The 60 of Hirschman racing with the 16 of Salamito for third. Fourth and fifth still side by side. Fifth and sixth in a battle. Great racing here early on as we single out a little bit. Blew it going up. Close the door back in the field so he doesn't have a freight train him on the outside lane. The field starting to get into formation. Single file out. Matt Hirschman was trying to check out that second lane, see if he could possibly roll some momentum all over the back bumper of Ryan Priest and Doug Kobe wasting no time with this lead. Salamito knows to tail the 60 car of Hirschman. Here comes Hosfeld to the inside. Salamito. Trying to defend the position from Hosfeld. He gets back in line early in the race. We've seen the six of Priest not go real hard early in the event, as the leader Doug Kobe is doing right now. He's not run any of these long distance races at the World Series at New Smyrna before. No, I think he and, and Hirschman will be on the same game plan as far as tire conservation. Doug Kobe right now, he honestly, he got a little bit of a lead, and now it's almost like that lead is just kind of has just almost chilled out. He hasn't really opened it up. He's just kind of got a nice little cushion to lean on. Might be pacing himself a little bit now as we watch second, third, fourth, fifth, and beyond. Priest in second, Hirschman in third, Salamito running fourth, and Hosfeld running fifth. Here comes the 
54, Tommy Catalano machine on the inside of Zacharias. This is the first time we've really talked about Jimmy Zacharias, the 71. He's had some problems. He's inside the top 10 right now. Yeah, hasn't had had some luck last year, had some good finishes, but hasn't, hasn't had that luck this year. Chuck Hosfeld working underneath the 16 and Timmy Salamino for the fourth position. Going to be lap eight on the board this time at the start finish line. Those details single file watching back through the field waiting for someone to step out of line but it's early in the race but these laps do go by in a hurry when these drivers and these cars go green for a while they can go by so quickly because of the speeds they turn here at New Smyrna Speedway. Yeah, especially with no cautions whenever we get a race that's caution free it almost feels like it goes by in a flash and speaking of flash right now that's 16 Timmy Salamito. Looks like he's got a flash of a race car trying to work around the 60 of Matt Hirschman. Yeah, he's got a pretty good piece, that 16 car, quick right now. Hosfeld's good as well, but each time we've seen him look to the inside, the car gets a little bit tight on the bottom of the racetrack, kills his momentum as he has to scrub off a little bit of speed, and it's getting pretty dicey back behind these drivers. You saw Tommy Catalano, Dave Sapienza, Jimmy Zacharias all battling. Here comes Hosfeld to the inside of Salamito, trying to take the fifth spot away. Jimmy blew it just behind him in seventh. Hosfeld making a run. Hosfeld on the inside of Salamito. Falls back a little bit once again. Couldn't stay alongside the 16. Salamito running fourth. Hosfeld running fifth. Meanwhile, leading is Kobe. Kobe's been out front by himself since the start. You got to wonder how long do you drive underneath the Underneath another driver, it's an easy way to wear out your right front tire, especially with only 13 laps in this race. And here comes showtime. Jimmy Blewett going to get by Chuck Hosfeld using a little bit of that nerf bar to get it done. Well, that's one way to make it happen. You get to the inside of a driver. If you want to make the move, you make it bold. You drive into the corner like old Teddy Christopher used to do going into the turns here at the World Series and kind of move them up the track a little bit it takes their momentum away instead of yours and he makes the pass does the two of blew it he's had a great race car in that Bertuccio racing machine all week long Sapienza and Emerling racing side by side Catalano Tommy Catalano joining this battle as well just ahead of him is the 46 of Jeffrey Goodale they're going to pull up on the back bumper of Chuck Hosfeld right now and not a good spot to be in for the 07 of Emerling. He's trapped on the inside, having to use those right side tires a little bit more. Yeah, and then he has to check up because the 46 of Goodale closed the door in the middle of one and two. Emerling actually had some momentum. Looked like he was going to be able to make some ground up on the inside lane, but that changed in a hurry. And look at all these side-by-side -side races. Battles in the top ten right now. Blewett makes a move on Salamito. Move Jimmy Blewett up to four. A good run also for Sapienza. First time we've really seen him crack the top ten. In battle, blew it. Has some company. Oh, look out! Salamito gets punted up the banking as they accordion him back down in turn number four, and Salamito loses five spots, even more. Zacharias to the inside. Oh man, it was a tough break, but could have been a lot worse for Salamito. Yeah, it's early in this race so far. Only 18 now, 19 down at the start finish line. Plenty of time to recover, but it is tough to pass here at New Smyrna Speedway. It's going to be. A hard-fought battle back up to the front. Rip him out of the inside of Salamito. He'll have to regroup, get back in line. Might have got some marbles on the tires as well, being at the top of the racetrack. Here comes Catalano inside of Blewett. Blewett now seems to have slowed in the two car. Dropping back out of the top five is Blewett. What has happened to the two? I think it's going to be a mixture of who wants to go and who wants to kind of ride. If somebody wants to save their tires where they feel like, it's a little too dicey where I'm at. I want to get a little bit ahead. And there is your leader, Doug Kobe, who's opened up just over or just under a second of a lead over Ryan Brees. 22 of Hosfeld, two car of Blewett side by side. Blewett looked really fast and then all of a sudden has dropped off a little bit as he's got a number of drivers lining up trying to get by to the inside of Jimmy Blewett. 22 laps completed of the 76th lap race. Emerling trying to make the pass on Jimmy Blewett. That'll be for the seventh position as they almost make a little contact. Sapienza gonna try to hang on the coattails of the 07 of Emerling as well. Emerling makes the move as he crosses the line this time. He's up in the seventh position. Some great racing in our top 10. We don't have to wait very long in this race to see a lot of side-by-side -side action as they have been shuffling, trying to put themselves in position. See Sapienza in the 36, making a move on Blewett. 
Blewett has his hands full right now. It's like the setup went away extremely fast, almost like there's an issue on the number two. It's either there's an issue or these guys are going a little too fast for the pace that he wants to run. Not really sure. You can always tell who's running the hardest by whose rotors are glowing after you get about 25 or so laps in. And right now only see Sapienza glowing a little rotors, but not a whole lot of the people around them. There's the 60 of Hirschman. Hirschman running in the third spot, running fourth, the 54 of Catalano. Led for a while last night, a pretty good while, in fact, before Priest made the pass. Goodale running in the fifth position as the field slows coming off of turn number four. As we have yellow waving for the first time tonight in the tour type modifieds is for the 25 of Carroll. Calvin Carroll in the 25 has spun and now gets moving again makes his way into three and four is the two of kobe right there he's been setting the pace early he's got another strong race car tonight he said he made some adjustments last night and it really didn't pay off he ended up third anyway but it wasn't as good wasn't as dominant as he was on night one yeah, he and brian priest had really kind of leveled off there as the run went on i think priest was kind of just letting him stay in his sights but on pit road is the 25 of Calvin Carroll. There's a good close up look at Calvin Carroll's 25 machine. They're actually checking the stagger on the tires, maybe closing that up a little bit as they look at the left rear of the 25 car. You see just behind him on pit road is that 16 of Timmy Salamito. After he got shuffled out, lost that track position, they probably figured might as well come down pit road and work on this machine along with Chris Risdale on the one machine. Risdale on the one, Carroll on the 25, and 16 of Salomito right there. So Salomito, one of our top contenders, had a really good race car. We saw him making passes in the top five. Now we get a good look at his race car and the work going on there. Look at all the rubber that's accumulating on the tires already. Yeah, just under caution. Uh, when it's really important with these modifieds to Try to clean off your tires as much as you can under caution. It does take a few laps to get that off there after the restart. That's why you'll see a lot of these drivers like Ryan Priest, they'll honestly lock the front tires up uh, under caution right before they go back green and try to clean them up and get some heat back in them. We'll see him shake the cars back and forth as Salamito will pull away. Watch him come away from his pit stall. Salamito in the 16. One to go signal's been given. Uh, Pace car lights are still on at this time. I thought he gave the one to go. I think he just doubled the field up that time. So we may go another lap around before turning the field loose. Listen, you always got to pay attention to Ralph Miller up there in the flag stand. Pace car lights still on, but it does come down pit road. They just didn't turn the pace car lights off. The field knows it. They're coming to green off of turn four. We are back underway. Kobe back into the lead. And Priest wasting no time to jump in line and secure that second spot. Catalano. On the outside, going to try to take third away from Hirschman, but here comes Priest to the lead. He's punched the go button. Priest on the move at the one-third mark of this race. Ryan Priest back out front. Watch Hirschman. He's looking to the inside of Kobe. Catalano is there. Another great run tonight for the 54. Hirschman going to try and waste no time getting around Kobe. He will. He'll clear him. Tommy Catalano just behind him. He will also try to move around the two of Kobe. Kobe might have some sort of issue or possibly use too much tire too early. Catalano on the inside of Kobe racing through turns one and two running the inside lane. Catalano is strong. You know he's strong if he's passing this two car of Kobe which led all but a couple of laps in that first long green flag run. Priest leads. Hirschman second. Battle is for third. Still side by side. Catalano really rolling the white line. Everybody else has seemed to move up to the second lane and Catalano going to have to fall in line behind Hirschman for the moment. He says, I do have to drop in line. How about I want second from Matt Hirschman? Goes to the inside in three and four. As he goes into turn one and two, a good run. That car's rotating really well on the bottom. He's able to keep his momentum up. Checks up a little bit coming off of two. Hirschman gets a good run on the top side. Yeah, Priest has really gotten up front. Hasn't taken off. I think he's gotten up front and he wants to set his own pace. He wants to calm these guys down a little bit, but that has just caused 
kind of mayhem behind him. We see a lot of two-by-two two racing. Catalano wasting no time. He keeps dropping to the inside. I'm at Hirschman trying to take the second spot away. Priest, Hirschman, Catalano, and Hosfeld. Hosfeld into the fourth spot, his highest running position in Salamito. Back to pit road in the 16. An unfortunate break for a driver who had a really good race car in the opening laps. Once again, Catalano dropping to the inside. No dice this time as we close up on the halfway mark. Just four or five laps away till we see the halfway point. Catalano last year was the rookie of the year in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, and right now that 54 car is showing why he was able to win that award. He's very strong here at New Smyrna. He's been here the last few years competing with the Modifieds, and he might be in third right now, but he's got one of the best race cars on the track, but you also see just about the whole pack is nose to tail right now as Priest leads, but doesn't really want to overdrive it at this point. Yeah, you see him real straight on corner exit. Hasn't really been pushing that car. One thing I noticed about him, too, is he takes it easy on entry. These guys really hard charging entry. He really kind of just rolls it off in there and gets a nice steady roll out of the corner. Use up the brakes, use up the tires on entry. Priest trying not to do that while leading. That's why they're maybe able to stay within striking distance. And Hirschman's always good at coming on late in the races as well. We saw that during his championship World Series a year ago. They call him big money for a reason. He's awfully good at these long distance races at saving tires, knowing just how much to get out of these Hoosier racing tires. And big money Matt currently in a good spot in second position. You see the flames coming out of the exhaust on the 54 of Catalano, the unburned fuel as he goes into the turns, a beautiful sight. That makes a great picture under the lights at night here at the World Series. Top three right there, Priest, Hirschman, and Catalano running and pulling away a little bit from fourth, fifth, and sixth. They've all kind of settled for where they're at except for Catalano. Every time Hirschman leaves that inside open, Catalano peeks his nose down there and says, if he can get a little bit of action. Speaking of which, the 36 of Sapienza trying to break into the top five. Best run he's had going for him so far in Speed Week. Yeah, just the second night he's been on the racetrack. Is down in turn number four. We've got problems in a second yellow. It's the one of Ridsdale, the 25 of Carroll. We saw both of those cars on pit road a little while ago. They were deep in the field. Last time they had crossed the line, Carroll and Ridsdale were running 19th and 20th respectively. Right front might have some damage on the Ridsdale machine. Doesn't look to be severe damage on either car. No, it might have just been a simple spin and Ridsdale couldn't avoid him. We did not see it, so we are not sure. Looks like both of them should be able to drive away, though. Can't see the damage on the left side of Carroll. Yeah, the uh, toe is way out on the one at Ridsdale. And Carroll pulls away. Looks like all wheels pointing in the right direction. He should be able to continue as we see the field go by the yellow flag of Ralph, Ralph Miller at the... So we close on the halfway mark, getting there, just a lap away from that. Great racing so far, though. It did seem like when Priest got up front, he really started to set the pace, almost try and slow the field down. And we, He was really the only one we saw not trying to overcharge the corners. He got a really good run up off, almost like a diamond. Uh, he diamonds the corners off, gets in nice and straight and out nice and straight. And that's the key to tire conservation. You see some work on pit road. A lot of guys taking advantage of this caution. And one of those is Doug Kobe in the two. Doug Kobe on pit road in the two car. Running so well coming into this one. There you see the car up close. Working on the rear end of the race car, the Kobe machine. So good the first couple of the nights, a win on opening night. Led for a while in this one, but he felt that the car was going away, I think, and he made a pit stop. Wanted to come in for some adjustments, and he's heading back to the track. He's going to be mired deep in the field. It's going to be tough. Uh, the longer these laps go on, the harder it is going to be to pass all these drivers up ahead. He also update on Jimmy Boot. We saw him dropping back there on that little run before this one. He still hangs in the seventh spot just behind Chuck Hosfeld. You know, Kobe had fallen to the eighth position before our most recent yellow, so I'm sure that's why he has made his way to the pits and now back to the track. Zacharias, good run early in the going in this one, was up in the top ten. You see some smoke coming out of that race car, but he's back away from his pit stall. He was running 13th when the yellow waved. Anthony Nosella also made his way to pit road. Nosella in the points battle as well, sitting fourth, 14 points out of the lead, Doug Kobe holds that down right now with a first and a third. 
of the two races the modifieds have seen. And the one of Ridsdale has taken his car behind pit wall. We saw the damage to the front end. The suspension was bent. The toe was way out. And he's unable to continue as we have 37 complete of the 76, about the halfway mark. Who's going to go out and be the rabbit now to lead this field? Will it be Priest in the six, Hirschman in the 60? Priest has the preferred groove in the outside lane for the start. Catalano, he'd like to lead. He's had a good race car. And Goodale, good run in the 46, back to green at New Smyrna. Good jump for the six of Ryan Priest. Hirschman didn't get the best jump. That allows the 46 of Jeff Goodale to try to get there. He will clear him off turn two, top two. Jump away side by side for third. Catalano drives it deep into turn three, pushes up the track a little bit, takes away some of the lane for the car on the outside. Goodale, we see some contact again, heading into one tight racing between the two for the third position. Catalano, Goodale, Sapienza in the 36. He's in the top five. And Hosfeld really bit the bullet there out of turn number four. He, he had to lift to not get in the outside wall, lost four, five, six spots. Still some good racing here. Amongst your top 10, Tommy Catalano has jumped in uh, behind Matt Hirschman. 20, 36 to go this time at the line. 36 to go this time for the 6 of Ryan Priest, 60 of Hirschman, 54 of Catalano. And again, he takes another look to the inside lane. But some of that rubber, maybe that grip going away for the 54. As it really killed his momentum when he did. And that allows... Goodale to the inside, contact made, and the good thing about these cars is they can make a little bit of contact despite them being open wheel. When they bump side to side, they normally don't spin because they have so much rubber and grip on the racetrack. One thing I notice about the drivers here in your top five, it seems like Catalano seems to be the most urgent, the most mm -hmm. hard charging at the moment. You can see the sparks when he gets into the corner, shoots the sparks off the brakes. That means usually using a good bit of brakes to get down in there with these mighty modifieds. The rest of the cars, you kind of see a little bit more tame, so I almost wonder if Catalano needs to take a chill pill for a moment. Still a good bit left to go in this one. You know who I think is also uh, rallied and starting to show maybe some more strength again is Blewett. He's running six, that white car, and the number two right there as he has joined the lead pack. Maybe he was saving a little bit earlier in this race when he got shuffled back. I'm impressed with Sapienza. Uh, we haven't really talked about him much coming into tonight and hasn't been that impressive, but He's been solidly within the top 10 all night. Now sits within, within the top five. He was the winner of the 2018 Turkey Derby at Wall Stadium, and he's in the top five trying to hold off. Blew it as we watch the six of Ryan Priest leading the way. 54 of Catalano in second, watching the field come off of turn number four behind them. So Ripkema go by. Ripkema moving forward. Hosfeld is dropped back. Hosfeld running in the ninth spot now. Yeah, Hosfeld after that exchange off turn number four, he really had to get out of the gas to avoid the outside wall and that cost him a lot of momentum. Four or five spots as well. As the field slows once again, you see the caution lights on. Ryan Priest keeps the field in tow down the back straightaway as we try to find the caution. I believe it was the 25 of Carroll. He just pulled down pit road. Calvin Carroll in his third caution of the night. And there's the two of Kobe. You can see him shaking that car back and forth. He has an issue of some sort. He was running back around where Calvin Carroll was. Kobe was in the 18th position. Kobe stays on the racetrack, though. If he made contact, it wasn't very hard enough. This time he'll pull it down pit road. And as the rest of the field continues, his caution with just 30 laps remaining. There you see your current points leader coming into this evening, Doug Kobe, the five-time NASCAR Wheel and Modified champion. Right in front of him, the 16-year-old Dylan Stoyer, winner of the 300 at Riverhead Raceway, a dirt and asphalt competitor, and there's the two of Kobe. What a bad night it's been for Kobe after a win and a third-place run as we send it down to the pits with a word on Kobe. Five-time modified champ, Doug Colby, back down pit road again after spinning out to bring out that last caution. The team is working feverishly around all four corners of this number two modified. They are not sure exactly what is wrong with it. So hopefully for Doug, they can figure it out and get him back into the race. 
And that's going to be their goal. And they can make up a lot of ground in 30 laps. It's a long way to go in the 76 lapper with a good race car. But right now, his car hasn't been good other than the first 25 laps or so. But he pulls away from his pit stall. And Kobe, the winner of a 50 lapper on opening night as we watch the field head into turn number one. The lights have gone out on the pace car. The leader is Ryan Priest in the six. Hirschman in the 60. You see him locking up the front tires, Casey. You mentioned it a little while ago. Yeah, that's uh, the way that a lot of these mod drivers will clean off their tires. Saw uh, Ted Christopher do it for a very long time. Ryan Priest, all your top-notch drivers will do it. But going back to the green flag for 30 laps here with the Tortite Modifieds. Field into turn number one. The roar of the tour type modifieds take him into the first corner. Goodale slips back a little bit in the 46. Catalano in the 54. Makes a bonsai move to the inside. We saw this a little while ago. This time there's more contact. Opens up the door for Sapienza. Three wide. Are they going to have enough room as they head to turn one? Still three wide. Somebody's got to give Sapienza bites the bullet. Now look at the battle between Jane Kowiak and Blewett side by side. And still Catalano and Goodale side by side as well. Catalano trying to get back up into the third spot. We saw him using up a lot of racetrack a lap ago. Gives Goodale a little bit of room there. They cross the line. Catalano scored third that time by. Cannot clear Goodale. Coming off of two. Nearly does. Will he close the door? Not quite yet. Keeping that left rear tire out there. Left front tire on the right rear of the 54 was Goodale. But now he drops in line. Look at Andy Jankowiak also has joined this battle as well. First time we've really talked about him inside the top 10, sits in the sixth position. With the two thirds mark of this race now completing at the line, the sixth car of Ryan Priest, it's go time. If you're gonna start making your moves, you probably don't leave a lot on the table now. Nah, you, time to go at this point. When you're within 30 to go, You'll start to see the intensity pick up. You'll see these guys start to drive it in a little bit harder, make some more bold moves that otherwise we wouldn't have seen before. And Catalano's got a rocket ship tonight. He's all over the 60 of Matt Hirschman. I'm not sure you'll see the 54 pick it up anymore. He's been running about 110% all the way through the early stages of the race in Goodale. Hard hit down in turn three and four. Something breaking on the 46 machine into the wall hard. Jeff Goodale, the Riverhead New York driver, a very hard hit as he crashes into the wall. Goodale moving around inside that race car, but it was a very hard hit for the 46. After a pretty good run up around the top five, Goodale was running fourth last time at the line, and there looked again as if something broke on that race car, sending him hard into the wall, bending not only the right front, but I think breaking something in the rear end of that race car as well as we go under red flag conditions with 51 of the 76 laps complete. Car stop down in turn one, Ryan Priest in the six, your leader. Hirschman in the 60 running second, Catalano in the 54 running in the third spot. Running fourth was Goodale. He's now out of the event and has crashed hard down in turn number three. At this time, as I promised earlier, going to bring along Bob Dillner. Bob, you've uh, been helping do a little bit of everything this week. We've seen <laughs> you running camera. We saw you switching the uh, camera shots a little bit here moments ago, kind of helping out, getting things going, and, uh, and now you're on the air talking about a division you love and hold so close to your heart, the Tour Type Modifieds. Love the Mighty Modifieds for sure. By the grace of God and 600 horsepower is what the Dillner family honestly lived by for such a long time. My dad, my mother, uh, of course, my brother, Matthew, uh, myself, just big Modified fans. And we're excited to be with everybody here tonight at New Smyrna Speedway. And like you said, uh, it's a big team effort here on Speed51.com, uh, you know, for what we do here at the World Series and, of course, live on Fans Choice TV as well. But I just enjoy watching all of these drivers do battle and we were having some great battles already throughout this one and i think it's ironic by the way i come in on lap 51. perfect timing right <laughs> what a race i think we're going to have to the finish how about catalano in the 54 car showing strength he's been very good last night close to a win and tonight he may have a car that can still win this thing i don't know that priest has shown everything he can do maybe hirschman hasn't either but that 54 has been running hard the last 
30 laps of this race. Catalano, one of the rising young stars coming out of the Modifieds. Uh, every couple of years, we see a new driver really come to prominence. And, and Catalano is one of those drivers from the Race of Champions Modified Series to the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour last year. Uh, but he can, will run just about anything. Uh, he's won street stock races upstate New York. So the kid's got talent. And the interesting story behind this machine down here is I was talking to Tommy Baldwin here yesterday at the racetrack. And he said, honestly, uh, Catalano bought one of my cars last year. And this is a mirror image to the car that he is building, Tommy Baldwin. So he is working down here with the Catalanos to try to perfect this race car. It's a, a brand new Troyer machine. They're working hard on it. Uh, they got some R&D into these machines. And Catalano is really making it work in this John Blue at the third memorial. Last night, the Catalano that impressed me just about as much <laughs> was Amy. She finished sixth in the event and almost passed Tommy late in the going. There you see the tow truck ready to pull the 46 Goodale machine back to the pits and tonight was his best run so far was in the top five was running strong and thought he was in line for a potential podium run and something breaking and he goes hard into the outside wall really was nothing he could do Nice to see Goodell back in uh, the cockpit of this race car. Last couple of years, he's tried a, a couple of different drivers in uh, the you know steering the wheel of this machine. So uh, he returns to the helm of the number 46 this year. And uh, unfortunate circumstance for him because that's some major right front damage to that 46. See our rundown going. You don't miss it. It stands out and it's standing out tonight not only in looks but in handling and performance up into the top four a little bit of beating and banging as we come to the green and look at this jan Koyak to the outside of hirschman for the number two spot andy j now have to concentrate on getting by sapienza in that 36 the battle for third ripkama just behind that in the 32 side by side as well oh little tag there from sapienza to andy j all oh, close quarters as the top four or five have singled out priest leads the way 15 laps to go. Priest, what a run he gets coming off the bottom of the corner. That car is definitely hooked up, and there is Jan Koyak with Sapienza. Little wiggle by Jan Koyak. He slides up the racetrack. The 36 shoots by. And the field slows again. Another late race yellow flag. And this one's going to be Nikki Carroll and the 25. Third mishap for the 25 as they're struggling with those cars tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, both of those drivers are in, uh, you know, maybe a three-strike, you're, you're out rule here, honestly. Uh, Might have had some contact there from what we're hearing. Nonetheless, you see the 25 rolling around again. The suspense is killing us. Who is going to be the strongest down the stretch? And, and Priestless runs, he's getting off the corner. It's going to be tough for Hirschman to make a run at him. You saw what Priest was doing earlier in the event. Letting up a little bit sooner going into the corner, letting the car cruise into the turn, not overdriving it into the corner, and getting great runs off the turn. As we watch the Nikki Carroll 25 machine get back to the tail end of the field, Dylan Stoyer in the 11 pulling away from its pit stall. And now the lights are out. Short yellow flag there. Not messing around tonight on this yellow as we are ready to go green again with 15 laps to go. Priest and Hirschman bring him in. Showtime. Jimmy blew it in that two machine. Don't count him out either. But right now, can Hirschman keep his nose in it? Oh, he does it off a of turn number two. Here comes big money. Matt Hirschman battling side by side with Ryan Priest in the six for the lead. The two favorites to win this race tonight battling up front. But now throwing a wrench into Priest's plans as well. This Sappy Inzakar got to the inside. Priest is able to clear him. That's big for him if he wants to try to mount another challenge at Hirschman, or is this just Matt Hirschman time? That is typical Matt Hirschman. He always pounces at the end of the race, had the opportunity, and he's an opportunist for sure. Um, he's not going to take that bold move until he has to. He had the perfect opportunity side by side on that restart, and he capitalized on it here. Battle for second, Ryan Priest and Sapienza just behind that. Jimmy Blewett slips up a little bit. Chuck Hosfield in the number 22 gets by. And all of a sudden, look at that 64 of Catalano again. She's running in the seventh spot, challenging Blewett there. We watch Priest just trying to hang on to the runner-up spot, also trying to close on the 60 again. 
And, and what Priest is doing there, honestly, for at least a couple of laps is Hirschman slides high a little bit, allows Priest to try to close in. But you can see Priest trying to keep it to the bottom side of the racetrack. When Sapienza was on him, he was giving him the outside groove. Dylan Stoyer moving through the field. Uh, really nice to see this 16-year-old running very strong here. He gets by Ripkema. Uh, right there closer to the top of the field. J Doug Kobe in the two trying to come through. But Dylan Stoyer, that's Chuck Stoyer's son. I, I, you know, Chuck Stoyer was a great modified racer, a charger racer, a late model racer from Riverhead Raceway on Long Island. This is his son. They've been running dirt pretty much over the past couple of years, both at Middletown in New York and Lebanon Valley Speedway. But they're going, concentrating on the asphalt again. Andy J with trouble stacked up the field in turn number four. He spun sideways. Field was uh, nearly collected. They stay under green, but a bad break for this 12 as the handle's gone. You see the right rear of that race car used up. And now the yellow does come out as the field slows down the back stretches for that car that you see out of turn number four as Nikki Carroll has spun for a fourth time. Honestly, at this point, uh, you know, it's better off starting again tomorrow for Carroll. Uh, he's had several incidents here today. Uh, sometimes you need to fine-tune that race car, and just uh, tomorrow's a fresh day. Press the reset button. Absolutely. Maybe unplug it and plug it back in. Yeah. As the 25 of Carroll makes his way down through the pit area, plenty of yellows for the 25s tonight, but the race is down now to a final nine lap shootout. Hirschman and Priest up front. And Hirschman all of a sudden looked like the one to beat. Priest was starting to close back in again right before we saw the yellow as the top two. Not a big surprise to, to go back and forth as we see the two of Blewett has made a trip to the pits. And Jimmy Blewett uh, teaming up with this uh, Bertuccio led team and you talk about two tough families, you know, they're, you know, it's interesting. The Blues are great people, you know, in the uh, the auto salvage business in New Jersey and uh, definitely with a junkyard, as they like to call it, and so are the Bertuccios. So it's a match made in heaven right here and uh, two hard-nosed competitors right there between the Bertuccios and the Blues and uh, Jimmy Showtime, they like to call him, is uh, a guy that loves coming here to New Smyrna Speedway every year that he can. And they just switched the left rear tire with the left front tire, trying to change the stack up a little bit on the number two as we send it down to the pits to Dylan Smith. Down in the pit of Jimmy Blue, the driver of the number two car, the team actually swapped the left side tires probably to adjust the stagger. Jimmy's down and away. Blew it back to the racetrack as a number two car was so good early on and a third and a second place finish coming into the night. He's had a couple of great runs and at times tonight in this race looked like he was going to be in contention for a podium finish. Field doubling up. Well, the last time Hirschman pulled away on the restart. Will Priest do it this time? He was on the inside last time. Hirschman as the leader of the race takes the outside this time. So uh, definitely an interesting move. Uh, Priest can send it in there. Kind of Bring him up high a little bit. Maybe get the run off of turn number two. Let's find out what happens here with less than 10 laps to go. He spins the rear tires a little bit. That allows Hirschman to get the advantage heading into turn one. If he pinches him a little bit, he should have the run off of two. And Priest really pushes up the track. Maybe he didn't get the tires totally clean in the front of the race car. Here comes Chuck Hosfeld, that red 22, running strong here, moving up into that third spot. Sapienza just behind him. Holy cow, look at the 71 of Zacharias. All of a sudden, a car that has not been a top 10 contender this week is a top five contention now. Zacharias up there racing side by side with Sapienza. Zacharias, the racing family out of upstate New York and a little bumping and banging right there for second. Chuck Hosfeld to the bottom side of the race car. We're used to seeing him in a black car down here, but he's got that red machine working good on the inside line. Definitely a different look for Hosfeld. He's in championship contention this week. A couple of top fives coming into the night as he's on the inside of Priest, who used it up, I think, Bob. The six car really fading now. See the 22 of Hosfeld crosses the line that time of the runner-up spot. But if those drivers don't Kobe. get a yellow... If those are, yeah, Kobe's moved back up into the top five, too. Wow. Doug Kobe has been on pit road two or three times in this one. Phil Moran dialed in the right rear of that race car. He's on the lead lap. He's up to fifth. Doug Kobe, which is five laps to go, coming strong. This race has seen a lot of comers and goers, drivers that have gone to the back, drivers that have made pit stops front and back, and 
plenty of passing in this race. It's been a racing track tonight with less than five to go. See what Kobe can do. Can he gather up any more mustard to get by the cars in front of him? Matt Hirschman pulling away from this pair right here, Chuck Hosfield, and the 36 of Sapienza. Hosfeld in the 22 running in the runner-up spot. The reason you don't see the leader is because he kind of checked out from the field as they were in that battle. He's got a, about a half straightaway lead. He's in good shape. He does not want to see a yellow flag wave. There were enough of those in this race. Yeah, say sayonara to Matt Hirschman, just like the stealth bomber that he is. Hosfeld holding on for dear life as well. I think a lot of these guys just out of that right rear tire, you can see it coming up off the corner when they kind of just, you know, don't have any grip whatsoever. Yeah, and Hosfeld pushes up the banking on the exit of turn two, looking for his best finish of the week. Just inside the top five, the last couple of nights, lower left of the screen, your leader. One more lap to go for Hirschman. White flag in the air. I think everybody's just trying to hold on right now. Matt Hirschman, many time race of champions, modified series winner. A winner on the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour last year, champion in the Modified Division. He takes the checkered flag in the John Blewett III Memorial here at New Smyrna Speedway. Fifth career win for Hirschman. Back to back in the John Blewett III Memorial. And boy, did he go right about the time we thought he might go and show his strength. He waits uh, in these long distance races. We saw him do it last year, saves his equipment. I don't think Priest was overusing his stuff either but he's, his stuff really did fade in the last several laps, actually falling down to the ninth position at the finish. This is all Matt Hirschman. That's what we've seen throughout his career. Uh, very similar to the way his dad once drove. Uh, Matt is a chip off the old block and gets the victory here tonight. I'm sure he's going to be very excited about this one. The Hirschmans and the Blewitts, uh, they have a long history, uh, both good and bad, honestly. In fact, Matt Hirschman battled with Jimmy Blewett. Uh, if you ask Matt, he'll say, Jimmy Blewett still took me out at the, uh, at the Wall Stadium Turkey Derby this past year. Uh, but they have a lot of respect for each other as well. And this will be a big win for Matt Hirschman here tonight. And and, and there is, is, is his family down there in victory lane uh, congratulating Dad inside the race car. Another good race tonight for the Tour Type Modifieds. They'll have the Richie Evans Memorial 100 coming up on Friday night when the fans will fill the stands. Great weather conditions and the parking lot will be packed when we get here early in the day, of course, with the always popular car show that just kind of leads up with some of the great festivities on Friday. Friday is a lot of fun. Uh, you see the vintage race cars, like you mentioned. Uh, there, there's just a lot of get-togethers, and you see people that you haven't seen for a really long time, and that's just part of the fun when we get to Friday with the Richie Evans Memorial down here. 100 laps for the modified division, the tour-type modifieds at New Smyrna Speedway each and every year at the World Series. Hirschman taking his time getting out of the race car the crew checking everything out on the rear end of that race car tire temperatures taking good notes because they know it was really good at the end so they need to know a little bit of this stuff for friday night yeah they're collecting those notes to put in their notebook and there is hirschman now 32 years old i believe which is hard for me to believe hirschman climbs out victorious in front of the crowd here on a wednesday night at new smyrna we will send it down to Victory Lane where Dylan Smith is with him. Standing by with Matt Hirschman. They call you big money. And when the money was on the line, you got it done, Matt. Yeah, it's two years in a row for this race. Uh, I really like the, the longer race here. Uh, guys had some strategy there, pitting and different things. Uh, but uh, worked out um, after last night. Uh, we really had to uh, work hard. Uh, Initially, I thought we were done for the week because uh, usually you don't uh, bring out a welder and grinders and uh, all that stuff at a racetrack. But uh, we came here to race, so uh, luckily it wasn't too bad that uh, that we, we were able to fix it. These guys worked hard. Uh, I mean, where I know we're all tired. We're going to go on adrenaline here and celebrate this for a little bit, but uh, we're definitely worn out. Uh, we worked hard for the last few days, and uh, hopefully... We can finish the week strong and uh, not have to do that again. Congratulations on your win, Matt. Thank you. Matt, winner of the John Blue the third Memorial Race. Yeah, you heard that. A lot of work with that crew after last night getting caught up in a crash, uh, being deep in the field when they spun in front of them. And you see the unofficial results as 
Hirschman and Haasfeld and Sapienza and Kobe. Doug Kobe, great rally for the number two car. It was, and it was very important in his quest for the championship down here in the five days of racing that the Modifieds partake in here during the World Series. Uh, I look at Dylan Stoyer back there, uh, that number 11 machine, the 16-year-old kid. Ryan Priest winds up ninth, uh, dropping back like a rock late in the race. But Patrick Emmerling, uh, you know, he said fast time on the first night. That's a brand new race car that they brought down here, still trying to fine tune it. You see Priest fell all the way to that ninth position. Gerstner with the uh, flat tire there in the late going, came back out and ended up getting back up into the top ten. You talked about big money, Matt. He wins races like this late in the going. He's won five races here at the World Series. Four of them have been extra distance races. That's Matt Hirschman, all Matt Hirschman. There you see Jimmy Blewett back outside the top ten here. Uh, and some family, the family taking a photo down there right now. And no one has won the Blewett race as well as the Evans race in the same year. That's a stat from the Stat Boy Elgin trailer. And I see Mama Hirschman is down there. She's finally made her way down here. I see uh, bro brother Tony Hirschman Jr. there as well in the shop. Let's go downstairs to Dylan Smith. Here with Chuck Hospital, second place finisher of the John Blewett, the third Memorial race. Chuck, man, you had to work for that one. Yeah, buddy. Um, I have a great team. We uh, we didn't have the car we needed when the, uh, in the beginning of the race. In fact, it turned too good and it loosened up on us. So we kept coming in and adjusting. And um, I knew we had a good car if I could break free from some of that traffic. And, uh, man, we had a fast car at the end. And I really believe I would have had something for Maddie if I was uh, closer after that last caution. So a nice second place finish for us. Um, my team's awesome. We have PFC rates and... And uh, Tommy from Heinz always helps us. So just to be down here with our Hutter engine and all the good stuff going on. You guys interviewing us and joking around, that's fun. So tonight we'll try to make it for dinner somewhere if it's not too late. And then do it all over again while it's like ground, Groundhog Day. You wake up and go, I don't know where I'm at, my bed and stuff. And we just come over and do it again. So really exciting. Fun, fun week. Keep having fun, Chuck. Chuck Hosfeld is a good dude. Uh, he's been around this Modified ranks for a real long time. Uh, Multi-time Race of Champions Modified Series champion. Uh, does a great job and uh, has a lot of fun when he's doing it. Loves coming down here. He started out and uh, you know, did a lot of big block modified racing, and now he's you know just stuck to the pavement, and we appreciate him being here. Third place finisher, David Sapienza. Dylan is with him. I'm with, here with Dave Sapienza, Turkey Derby winner. Dave? Heck of a run, man. Yeah, we had a good time out there. Uh, yeah, I was telling my crew chief earlier, I don't really time trial well, but I can race a car. So we, we pretty much time trial with a race setup. And uh, they told me it was going to be good. He guaranteed me a top five, so I just stuck it out there. Congratulations on that. Thank you, man. Yeah. Good run for that car right there in his second night of the World Series. Didn't run on opening night. You see our top three. You can't tell he's from New York at all, can you? Oh, not at all. I could say that because I'm a native Long Islander, right? Everybody says, where's your accent, Bob? I said, well, when I came down, I said, radiator on the air. And immediately they said, you got to get rid of that Long Island accent. So I had no idea it was radiator. It's almost as bad as a tinket. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that a few years ago here, the uh, Canadian pronunciation of the tin kit inside some of these race cars. Oh, we've got one more feature yet to go tonight, a 35 lapper for the super late models. And the super late models have a kind of a different field of cars tonight, uh, this year. We, some of the guys that we would expect to see at the front over the last few years, the Majeskis, uh, the Burtons, Nassie. the Nassies, not here this year. And it's really given a chance for some other guys to get up there and compete. And actually, we've seen some pretty good racing. You know, you look at Logan Seavey, the USAC National Midget Series champion from last year. Uh, he's here competing in a Wimmer Motorsports machine. Uh, Dan Fredrickson giving up his ride. Um, and he had been running very well with some finishes up there in the top five. And he actually forfeits his ride because Sam Mayer last night was kind of an innocent bystander in, in an accident on the racetrack. And he demolished his race car. Well, now he's in Dan Fredrickson's ride here for tonight at New Smyrna Speedway. And in qualifying tonight, he came off of turn four after turning a very good first lap. He got too high and slammed the he right did. side up into the, the wall. So we'll see how that car handles during the super late model 35 tonight. Brad May, you see him with the white number nine on pit road. 